I was in rehab 18 months ago. They took my phone from me. They took the laces out of my sneakers and out of my out of my sweatpants. They 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 locked the refrigerators after 8 p.m. You may recognize his face and know about his career, but I doubt you know his whole story. My recovery really started when I ran out of people to blame. From SNL to Jerry Maguire, but now he's back to his comedic roots. If you're coming, I got you. Jay Moore, and he's excited to talk to you. Let's go, dude. <laughs> I'm not going to let him down. Hey, guys, welcome to another edition of The Pulse. And I say it every week, and it's cool that it's true every week, that we get a chance to talk to people who are doing cool things. They're changing lives. They've got great stories, actors and comedians and entertainers. And Jay Moore is all of those things and joins us right now on The Pulse. How are you, sir? Great, Billy. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing all right. So we started off joking behind the scenes what people can't see is that we were going to represent Philly with going straight undershirt for the whole, for the interview. And you were down. You're like, Let, let's just go with it. I'm a, I'm a Jersey guy. I'm a Jersey guy. I don't need any excuse. You, you Jersey guy, you take it, you own it. So this area is, is like home to you. Yeah. I mean, East Coast, I'm glad I grew up on the East Coast. You know, I'm out here in California where people stab you in the back. And I grew up on the East Coast where people stab you in the front and explain to you why they're stabbing you as they do it. Right. At least here, you know, we're coming, right? Like you're coming yeah. from the front. So you can prepare yourself for the drama that's coming. You know, why, you know why I'm stabbing you, right? You know why I'm stabbing you, you know. Um, as I mentioned with you and others that we've had on the show, you've done a lot for years. And it was funny because I was talking to different people around the station where I am. And everyone I talked to, to knew you from something different. You know, so we got SNL. We obviously got Jerry Maguire. We got multiple TV shows. All the ladies I talked to said picture perfect. Yeah, I could. You know, when people <laughs> when people come up to me and recognize me, I can guess what they know me from by their demographic. Like if it's a woman, I'll guess picture perfect. Like you, I would say Jerry Maguire. If it's like a weed smoker, I would say mafia. <laughs> Uh, you know, it, it, it's really interesting. I, I've, um, I'm realizing now at 52 years old, I've, I, I've had a really cool, great career that I wouldn't trade places with anybody. And I'm excited that the best is in front of me. And that not a lot of guys can say that at 52 years old to have the awareness and the certainty that my best work is in front of me. And I'm fired up, dude. I'm fired up. Nice. A lot of people can say it. Not a lot of people can mean it. Why do you mean it? Well, I was in my way for a long time, my whole life. I got in my own way. You know, I, I went to, uh, I'm sure you know this already, I went to rehab 18 months ago. I got clean and sober, and um, I, I've learned in recovery. Well, first I learned that my recovery really started when I ran out of people to blame. And mm. when I know that I'm the problem, if I know that I'm the problem, I always have a solution. And if I always have a solution, I really can't lose. And, you know, my stand-up now, Bill, is, is it, it, it's freaky. It's so great now. But it's not me, though. I'm saying a lot of the bit, you know, I'll do a, a big chunk of material that I did 20 years ago. And the response it'll get now is so disproportionate to anything that I'm used to hmm. as far as, like, laughs and yelling. And, and the only difference is that I, I got out of myself. I got out of my own way. And there's no barrier between me and the audience. I'm just kind of there channeling, you know, the funny. And I laugh a lot on stage because I realize how funny all the stuff is now, too. <laughs> I'm really thirsty. I'm tripping on Molly tonight. <laughs> and uh, I didn't think I'd see her, but... You had a special that came out not that long ago. Uh, and when people kind of talked to you about it, you talked about the fact that 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 was in the height of some of your challenges. Um, and you looked at that. Altamont? Yes, Altamont. Alt yeah, that was I was real high when I did that special. <laughs> and it's pretty good. But, you know, I'm not in the pretty good business. Comics can't be in the pretty good business. Pretty good is a quick way out of town. If you're a stand up comic, you have to be great because you have to get people to want to come back and see you. It's like when KRS-One used to rap, you know, if you're dope live, it's like being insured for life because they'll always come back and see you twice. 
Like yeah. anybody can do the gig, but can you do the gig again and then do it again and then do it again and have that same audience come back and bring a friend and go, no, you don't understand. He's, he's different. He's great. Altamont, you said, was, was pretty good, right? But it was in the middle of dealing with addiction and, and you, know, you remember some of it and not all of it. What's great now? Like you're in, you're in Philly, October 8th here doing your stand up uh, at live. What's different about what you were doing then and kind of where you are now in a different stage of your life? Well, there was always a barrier, Bill, because I always wanted to know what was going to happen once I got off stage. I always wanted to know, like, where the girls were. I always wanted to know where if I was going to re-up on pills, where am I going to go after this? Where's the party after this? And I'm a free man today. All I have is now. Like, this, right now, everything's great. And when I'm on stage, I'm on stage. My mind isn't wandering to any other place. I'm present. And the audiences have really rewarded me and shown me love. You know what I learned, man? I learned in recovery how many people have been rooting for me for so long. Mm. And, you know, when, when you're using drugs or drinking, you, you just have this poor me, poor me, poor me another drink. And then you get well. Like, I look, we were supposed to do this earlier, and I said, oh, I didn't know it was going to take this long. I actually got a meeting. I, it's part of my morning routine. So put it wherever you're comfortable propping it up so you can get comfortable. What do you mean for this long? How long is this? It's supposed to be like 25 minutes, 30 minutes. You're an interesting dude. I didn't know that. I'm missing an AA meeting. Are you serious? Yeah. Do you want to do it another time? Like we, we can do it a later can time. Can we do it in an hour? I can do it in an hour. Sorry with me. I think, I mean, yeah, we don't want you to not do that. So let's, let's do it again at noon. And your producers were like, no, that's great. We're, we all want you well. We've been following this. You've been outspoken about your recovery. And that really meant a lot to me because the more I'm sober, the more I learn that people, people have been rooting for me this whole time. And in my addiction, I thought the opposite. I thought everybody was against me the whole time. When I'm on stage, I'm so happy to be there. I was in rehab 18 months ago. They took my phone from me. They took the laces out of my sneakers and out of my out of my sweatpants. They 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 locked the refrigerators after 8 p.m. I had a bedtime. I was 50 years old. That is the worst. And let wow. me tell you something. The only thing worse than being the old guy at the club is being the old guy in rehab. Yikes. So now that I'm out and I'm sober and I'm clean and I'm free, I can't wait to share the happiness I have. You're very open about your challenges and you told the story about telling us i you know i need to go to a meeting why so open why do you feel like you need to be sharing that information the cool answer would be the 12th step is we carry this message to other alcoholics as part of my responsibility as a member of a 12-step group but the real answer is it's a survival mechanism i i've really done some thinking about this in my meditations and stuff and it's the more transparent I am, the more people I put between me and my garbage, the harder it is for me to get back to my garbage. So the more open I am, the more when I see Bill Anderson, when I'm rolling through Philly and I see you, and if I got a weird walk and I'm talking funny, you're going to go, uh-oh. Mm -hmm. So I think it's like a survival mechanism where I put as many people between me and my BS that it's really hard for me to reach it. That makes sense, though. If you're putting it out there, then more and more people will hold you. They're holding you accountable while rooting for you. That's got to be a great feeling. They had that many people who were like, all right, look, I, I got you. We want to see you succeed. Be on the road now. I love it so much because that's that's really what got me into recovery and got me to agree to go to treatment was when my agent, who's my best friend, who I groomed to be my agent. So he would always look out for me mm -hmm. when that guy says, if you don't go to treatment, I'm not going to book you anymore. That's wow. what got me. It was my ego. It wasn't the fact that when, when every time, uh, it wasn't the fact that my girlfriend bought another apartment and she was going to move to it and not tell me where it was if I didn't agree to go. It wow. wasn't the fact that everybody that came to visit me were really doing welfare checks on my nine-year-old son. Mm -hmm. It was ego. But now that I'm back doing it and I'm clear-headed, I have a quiet mind and I have a full heart, I'm so grateful to be back doing it because now it's not it's not look at me, look at me. It's listen to this, listen to this. It's more sharing than performance, you know, sitting there. No, listen, I, you're sitting I there like, Who is this guy? No, absolutely. The exact opposite. I tell people all the time that the thing I enjoy most about this 
is getting the opportunity to hear from people that a lot of us have seen from a distance but have no idea who they are as people. Uh, and when people are open and honest about their challenges and their successes, I think that makes everybody more real. Like you, you're, you're, yeah, I saw you in Jerry Maguire, but you're, you're a guy who's talking to me who faces the same challenges we all do. Look, I lost. Like I lost. I was 50 years old. I walked into my own intervention. That's a loss. And now I, I get to win every day. How could I not be grateful? How could I not be fired up? I get to get on a plane and go to Philadelphia, one of the greatest cities in the country, with the realest, most blue-collar folks, and just and they they bought tickets to come see me do stand up. Let's go, dude. <laughs> I'm not gonna let them down. So tell us about about the Let's show. Go! <laughs> so you come into Philly. You'll be here. You're continuing to tour. So Philly is is one of the stops on the eighth. What are we going to see when you come here? What's, what's your comedy show look like? Well, I'm going to tell you all about what my intervention was like and the, the absolute you-know-what show that led up to my intervention. I'm going to tell you about what it was like for me in rehab. But it's all funny. Like, none of it's heavy. It's hilarious because it's just, you know. It's, it's 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 a 50 year old guy in rehab with a bunch of 20 year olds with hoodies on and fruity pebble vapes trying to look cool. <laughs> uh, a lot of a lot of impressions. You know, Tracy Morgan's going to be there getting everybody pregnant. Uh, Christopher Walken, Al Pacino stories, Clint Eastwood stories, Chris Farley stories. A lot of uh, stand up comedy about being a dad and about the madness of having sons trying to keep those guys alive. But you know what? It's going to be joy. It's going to be great. All I can tell you is, if you don't want to come, I can't stop you. But if you're coming, I got you. Nice. How's it been received? You're going to different places. This is new for people. Like, people remember you always as funny. They can go all the way back to SNL and some of the other things you did. But this is new. So how are people taking it in? I've had people tell me they're grateful. It's, it's something, I don't know how often it's done. Like, somebody on stage sharing the absolute worst thing to ever happen to them, but also explaining that it's the best thing to ever happen to them. But I can make it funny. I can make it accessible. It doesn't have to be like this TED talk where it's quiet for a long time. The jokes are there. I pound it out. It, it, it's, just, I'm, it's, it, it's been a very special, beautiful reception that I'm, I'll never be able to pay it back. And that's why I just keep going out on the road and sharing that message man because we need comedy dude the world's a messy place yeah, yeah. we need it bad right about now we don't like each other very much you know so I, basically i go hey look how crazy everything was for me and look how crazy everything was over here this is how crazy it is probably for you having kids now here's a tracy morgan impression let's all go home are they still positive memories now to look back on oh, all yeah. the things oh yeah great memories like you know I went to Al Pacino's house with my son. Like I, I worked with Clint Eastwood, Tom Cruise, and the, like Keanu Reeves, Forrest Whitaker. Like these, this, but mostly like the stand-up memories with all like in those salad days when you're hungry coming up. Like you gotta understand, it was it was me, it was Dave Chappelle and me, and Neil Brennan. We we all hung out every single day, every single night. Like it, it's ridiculous when I look back, like. The, like basically all these comics pop, Bill Burr, Bobby Kelly, Rich Voss, we all popped and we were all on the same stoop. Literally, we all sat on the same stoop almost every single night. Just Patrice O'Neill used to kick the hell out of us. You'd walk down the street, Patrice O'Neill would be like, look at this guy with his tight pants on. And it was on. Like we just got into it every single night. I think that's why we're all such great comedians because we tried to kill each other with our words every night like yeah we went on stage and we had great sets but when we got off stage and we were just chopping it up man we tried to take you out Weird questions when we're married it's always accusatory always like you're trying to catch us at something why was i in the bathroom so long i don't i don't wipe my butt properly i think maybe you passed on the show that became kimmel i did why? why? Uh, well, it was called the ABC Late Night Components. 
I had a meeting with Michael Eisner. He offered me the what became the Jimmy Kimmel show. And I really saw it as I wanted to be on the other side of the desk. I wanted to be there because I had a new movie. I didn't want to be stuck in that one seat at that one desk and keep asking like, you know, a housewife about her third cookbook. I wasn't built for that, to be that stationary and have people keep coming in to promote what they were working on. And I could see the future that I'd be really jealous that they were able to come on a show and promote what they were working on because for the next whatever years, this is all I'm working on. With so many different things you've achieved, what's the best thing when you look back on, on your career? Writing books, having them published and promoted because I barely got out of high school. So that's, it's kind of mind boggling that people will say like, hey, I really enjoyed your book. When you have a book, you have it for a few months. It's on your nightstand. You go on vacation with that book. It's in your lap when you sit on the beach. It's in your bag when you get in some Jeep in Jamaica to go to some other spot. That's, that's pretty cool. You know what I mean? And then when they're done with the book, it just lays around in their house. And then somebody goes, hey, what's this? Then that person has their own journey with the book. You're on tour right now. What's the next big thing? Or are we not planning that far ahead? The next big thing? We're talking about Philly, son. <laughs> Philadelphia. Look, clearly, Philly is always the next big thing. Go Eagles, by the way. Yeah. I always say that every chance I get. Oh, by the way, let me say this. How about all those passive racists that question Jalen Hurts? What do you got to say now? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Turns out he's damn good at quarterback. He looks good. Yeah, he looks good right now. That's my quarterback, man. Um, so, But after the tour, there's always TV. There's always movies. Or right now, focus is, is tour. That's why I didn't want the desk job. That's why I didn't want the late night shows. Because I don't know what's going to be next. It's going to be something. It might be a game show. It might be... Maybe it's another book about recovery. Maybe, who knows? That's the best. But I know God's got me. He hasn't let me down. I've let me down. But if I give my day over to something else, if I get out of the way and let life happen, it goes pretty damn well, my man. Look, we're sick. Look, the odds of us sitting here talking, Bill, are zero. Your great, 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 great grandparents have to be born on another continent live long enough to have a baby that doesn't die in a world war or from Genghis Khan or Hitler. And I haven't even gotten to my side. Every side, baby, baby, move, move, this, stay alive, stay alive. The odds of us talking right now are zero. This is a miracle right here, dude. That is the perfect... Can you imagine... Hey, hey Bill, can you imagine me on drugs? <laughs> 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 All right. I ever hide. See, now, see, now you about to get me canceled. Now, I'm sitting here. I'm not supposed to laugh at that. Bro, that was funny. Let me tell you something. I, <laughs> I, no, no, no. You are supposed to. I was, I was on speed, too. I was coaching high school wrestling. I was a high school wrestling coach on speed. I was so skinny, my nipples were longer. <laughs> All right, I'm going to make sure I keep your number because oh, I, I might need a job. I might, I might need a job after this interview. Oh, so. I, had those, I had tater tots. We end the show with a segment called Use Your Voice for Good. And so as much fun as we've had talking about a lot of different things, and you shared a bunch of your experiences, and I respect and appreciate that. What does, and I feel like it's, it's kind of your whole existence, what does use your voice for good mean to you? You got to help somebody else. I, I got to If I don't help a newcomer, I'm going to become a newcomer. We got to help each other. You got that's the backbone of what I'm doing on a day to day basis. My personal journey, my recovery with what's printed in black and white and all the literature that I'm rolling with is if I don't help somebody else, I'm going to lose this. This joy is gone. If I don't give it away and show somebody how I got to this point. October 8th in Philadelphia, live casino. Uh, my man, I appreciate you. I wish you continued success. I appreciate the openness. This has been, this has been fun. Bill, I can't share this message if you don't give me this platform. So I'm grateful for you. I love you, brother. Let's do it again. My man, we will talk soon. I'll see you in Philly. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> 
Today's show with Jay Moore was really one of the things I'm most proud of for this show. People who are doing things, but also sharing their stories in hopes that it entertains and helps all of us. And it did for me. I hope it did for you as well. Remember that you can always download the podcast, all places where podcasts are available every Monday. Go ahead and subscribe. And I leave you today as I leave you every day, reminding you whenever you can, use your voice for good and have a good